Quick snack before panel, friend. Yeah. Uh, recharging the battery. Recharging the battery. Oh, does that make you want to go to the Is that the one you banged out? Yes. <laughs> does that make you want to go to the Rio Bar? Exactly. Yeah, hold it. Hold it. They were so excited when I told them they didn't have to wait in line. They showed up like. They showed up numerous times. <laughs> Party animals. Like New Year's Eve. I was like, hey, you're good, man. I promise you, you're good. I was like, are you sure? I was like, sure. I was like, sure. We might have 10 people. I was like, that's fine. Go ahead, do your thing. Have fun. We're standing outside. Salon 3. Salon 3 with Big Mike, it's almost showtime. Is it, friend? It's it's this time o'clock. The rest of the QT Marshall story. Hopefully, some of those people. We're live here. We're here at San Diego Comic Con 2017. We're talking boys in tight vestesses, girls with big breasts. All we gotta do is get in there and shake your wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Almost showtime. How you feeling? How you feeling? How you feeling? How you feeling? Another day, man. Oh, is it on already? It's about to like a minute, yeah. What are you guys doing? I've seen it for two years. Oh, what the hell? I was going to sit with all Take these hunks and like sit in there. Oh, I'm going. Well, you want to get a picture? You guys don't want to get a picture in front of this? You got to go in. Go in with us. We all got to go in. Yeah. Come on. We'll do a picture on the way out. Yeah, yeah.
three man team. Pretty much, yeah. Right, right. Right. Uh, there's me, myself, Frank, and uh, the guy over here, Francis, who works at the Monster Factory, the QT's mom's house, wherever we had to film, and uh, just grew together. <laughs> We're together this, and now we're here. <laughs> I just thought they were going to film some stuff, so it was pretty cool. There you go. Yeah, um, so there's not a whole lot of documentaries based on pro wrestling. I was wondering why you wanted to, I mean, why you chose to focus on pro wrestling for this documentary. Um, I don't know, that's a good question. I mean, it really, at the end of the day, it kind of appeals to whoever has a dream. Like, it doesn't, I know it's pro wrestling as you see it, but whoever has a dream and didn't fulfill it or, or is still pursuing it, you know, that's the most important thing. But yeah, like you said, in pro wrestling terms, that there's not really in that in that light like that. So I figured try to take a risk and do something in that way. I'll say this: like I was happy that somebody did want to jump into that because for some strange reasoning, uh, for some strange reason, people hide pro wrestling. Like if, if I saw him at a bar and he sits down and I'm watching, he's like, oh, are you watch this fake stuff? That like you watch Game of Thrones. You know what I mean? Like we, you know, we're just, it's entertainment. That's, uh, but you don't see the, the backside of it. Like, you know, you'll see me and say, oh, that's Mike. You know, but Mike is QT and QT is Mike, really. You know, just in a different costume. So. Um, and we play we play characters, but you know it's it's one of those things that I, I'm a fan of showing everybody because the more people that understand what we do, um, the more fans that we'll get. You know, I don't want it to be this hidden thing of like it's a cult. You know, it shouldn't be. There's 85,000 people at WrestleMania, but yeah, Ring of Honor we can only get 4,000. How is that possible? You know, it's because no one tells them all these stories and stuff like that. So when he wanted to do it, I was like, yeah, let's you know let's tell everyone what it is. You know, because if you meet the, um, you know, the Walking Dead and you meet Jeffrey Dean, whatever Morgan his name is, um, I'm I don't, I don't know anything about this stuff. But when you meet him, you know, he's not like, oh, I'm not going to tell you what we go, would do. You know, he, he's, a, he's all about it because he wants to promote it. For some reason, pro wrestling is just one of those things that everyone's like, shh, don't tell them what we do. Why not? Tell everybody what we do. You know, that way they can respect it and understand. It's just not a bunch of Neanderthals in underwear who play fighting. You know, so that's what my mother still thinks to this day. So. Um, not that I can recall at the moment. I mean, I have one glacier. Yeah, so uh, one of my po close personal friends is this guy, his name's Ray. Uh, he used to perform as Glacier in the World Championship Wrestling a long time ago. And, uh, you know, he I mean, he loved the film and to the point where he's doing some kind of screenwriting movie stuff and he contacted Frank and wanted to help him out with the, the, the script and everything. And it's, you know, it's, it's kind of what, like when we did our uh, screening at Full Sail University, someone stood up and they asked a question about, you know, like, what do you do if you're, you know, your, your mother and your, your wife or girlfriend, they're not supportive of you and stuff. And I told them, you know, get rid of them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I told them, you know, just, you know, you just gotta, if you're serious about something and you show that that comes first, I'm not saying to put everyone else behind you, but if you show how serious you are, then other people will take you serious about it. If you don't, and that, I think that's one of the things that this film shows is that for a while I didn't, I just was having fun and because I was young and you think that time just lasts forever. Um, but then for those eight months that I was real serious about it, they left me alone. They didn't, my wife didn't ask me any questions. It was like, I'm going to the gym, I'm doing this, and she was all about it. So, um, you know, and I think, like I said, like and what he said, it's it should hit home with anybody, no matter what your dream is, whether it's to be a professional wrestler or to, you know, be a top executive at a firm. Um, you know, and what the struggles are. And I'm sure everybody has a parent that doesn't, they should believe in them all the time, but sometimes you say things that are just out of this realm to them because they don't understand it. You know, so, just like just like me, when I first came here, I didn't understand all of this. You know, and I've been here a couple of days and one of my best friends is wearing a blue wig. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, and I get it now, so. How, how hard was it to get him to talk the entire time? <laughs> Not hard at all. <laughs>
I won most cognitive in high school, and I don't want anyone to think it was a fluke. So. What were some challenges to production, and how did you overcome um, Money is always the issue. Like, for instance, I went and bought a pretzel before, and that probably cost more than the whole production. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but for real, yeah, it's just it's timing with everything. When, he, when we approached him to film the scene with Gerald Briscoe, the town scout, we had about, what, a week to get the camera, a couple of us together, and, you know, all having day jobs and getting there at night and, you know, making it happen. That was pretty much like, but as for the last two years with me and him, everything was, you know, it worked out well. We never had an argument. And, but at the end of the day, the problem, the problem is always going to be money. So. I'm still waiting. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can relate with that, yeah. Because, you know, I'm still trying to get on after graduating from film school four years ago, so. Like, I wouldn't have spent two years of my life and still continuing doing this project if I didn't believe in it, so, yeah. So, at the end of the document, it doesn't have necessarily a happy ending. That would be not quite working for Snap on, hasn't quite made it. Yeah. Is that scary? Has not been? Not really, because I'm, yeah. You gotta keep going. I don't believe in quitting, so. <laughs> After I leave this room, I'm gonna continue on. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got um, a friend of mine actually went to film school with. Uh, just seeing the logo on, you know, being in here now. His uh, distribution team, they're, you know, they're taking a look at it, so they're gonna see what, what happens. I don't think if they would have looked at it. Even if they knew me, but you know, they know we got into here, it gives it a better shot. You know? cool. right. <laughs> All right, so, well, thank you guys very much. Oh. Um, we're still working at the, on that at the moment, but um, yeah, I, couldn't, I can't give you a real ballpark answer for that. I thought it was really good. Thank you. I, I Appreciate that. Thing. I had no idea. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like a second job. You know? Well, and, and I say I say that that uh, you know, in an average week for like a WWE superstar, because I have friends that are there. You're in the ring for like 40 minutes a week. You know, so oh, that's great. You only work 40 minutes. That's not radio interviews. That's not television interviews. That's not traveling. That's not all the other stuff while people are watching you and, and following you on social media to make sure you're not saying the wrong thing. I mean, it's, it's rough what they go through and then the physical toll that they do as well. So that's why I said, like, I want everyone to see all that stuff because when they walk down the street, they should get the same recognition as, you know, actors that don't do their own stunts. And like, we perform our own stunts and you know what happens when we mess up? Somebody gets really hurt and we can't just stop and say, you know, re you know uh, take two, which, uh, you know, that's why I say it's, it's nice to get that out there and let people see it because uh, I, I've actually gotten a lot more fans just through having uh, the documentary, you know, from Full Sail and stuff like that. People that have never watched Pro Wrestling, oh my God, it's awesome, you know, let me follow your stuff now. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, to, to this day, you know, we're still, still trying. Um, I'm actually working for Ring of Honor Wrestling again starting next week, so that's pretty cool. And I think this documentary had to do a little bit with that, you know, timing, everything like that. So, you know, I'm excited. Excited for the future. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for uh, checking it out. And... Yeah. <laughs> Just keep following. And don't give up. Gentlemen, we'd like to thank you for your participation in the film festival. We have a little award for you there. Coming up at 5.30, we have the art and science of film, pyrotechnics, and firearms.
Say, so I like, eh. you sound like there. No, I mean, I, I wasn't like. No one asked anything about the sound. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was just. I, I felt like Frank should be answering. Like, I had answers for every question in my head. I was like, eh. Like, eh, fuck it. Wait for Frank to jump in. Where's she? Get thrown it back to That's hard up there. I mean, there was a lot of people that came into the world. The next one. But still, they were there for the QA, which they got to hear something. Right. So that's cool. Oh, oh. You know, let's go. Let's see. I don't even know what's next. Just wait and see. Who knows? So, so tomorrow's 11 o'clock. What are they doing? Do we have to go somewhere? or no, Just go in there. Like the, the guy from Spider-Man. The guy from what? Spider-Man. Right, right, okay. Like I said, it's, if there's one person, I'm you. Right, good deal. Let's take a picture of holding this up in front of this thing. Picture, picture, hold on. Let me switch it. <laughs> <laughs> 